Hello everyone, welcome to this course. So in this particular course, we will talk about what is data structure and algorithms. In a short form, I used to say that this as DSA. So whenever we are talking about this term as DSA in entire course, just keep uh, in uh, your head that this full form is data structure and algorithms. So that's what we will try to cover up in our this entire course. So basically what we will try to do is that we will try to understand first of all what is data structure. After that we will try to understand what are the key aspects of algorithm, what is an algorithm and how basically we can solve any problem statement with the help of a different kinds of algorithms. Now obviously before moving ahead towards this session I thought that it's quite important as an initial point to understand that after all why this data structure algorithms is required what's the motivation behind learning this these things right so let me try to connect the examples which is in a real life practical scenarios so that you will try to appreciate that why you are learning these things and then uh, going forward you will see that we are having a different sessions where we are talking about different kinds of data structure and different ways to solve any problem using a different kinds of algorithm. Now the question is first of all what do we mean by data structure? I hope as the name suggests data structure is a way to structure your data right. Now structured meaning the organization. We want to organize the data in such a way so that it's easy to retrieve the data, it's easy to store the data right. For example, you are going to a library and in that library, the books are not uh, uh, organized. For example, they are not under the heading of uh, science or commerce or computer science. So you will get, uh, if suppose you want to search for a book, it will take a lot of time. On the other hand, if the book is organized under its main heading, uh, which is written, written on the bookshelf, then it's quite easy for us to, to check which book we want to get and whether that, whether that book is available in the library or not. So basically the important point here to understand is that, that what we want is we want a structured data. In order to structure the data, we have different kinds of data structure. Now here how many different kinds of data structure we have? Here you will see that we are having various different different kinds of data structure. One is linear based and one is non-linear based. For example, array, for example, linked list. These are a kind of a linear based data structure where, for example, stack, for example, queues. What is happening is that there is a somewhere linearity. All the elements are, are uh, ordered in such a way that they're forming a linear fashion. Okay, now apart from that, we are having something called as trees, we are having something called as graph, right? So these are the different kinds of data structure that we have and many more, right? So here if you will see, the question came obviously in your head that why these many data structures are required? Can't one be enough to give the entire information or to, to store the entire information? No. The answer is no. Why is that so? Let me try to give you one simple example. I hope everyone knows the undo operation that we used to do in our system, right? What does this undo operation says? So the keyword is control plus Z that we used to type while uh, doing the undo operation. So usually what happened is that suppose I deleted some content. Uh, now if suppose I want to get that content again, so what will happen is that? I will just press control plus Z. I will just press control plus Z, right? Now, this is something where whatever be the last information I have, that will come out. So last in, first out. This is something, the application of a stack based data structure. That's where developers when designed this keyword, they have implemented the stack based data structure which is basically used to store the last information that we are typing, right? Now, this is something which we are saying is a 
example of a stack based data, data structure because inside that particular operation we want to implement the lifo kind of uh, terminology similarly suppose suppose you want to build some network suppose uh, what i would say is that that suppose you are booking some ola cabs there is a booking system obviously we all know i hope everyone is aware about that so either suppose i am using ola or i am using uber so what is happening is that i used to enter the uh, destination and after entering the destination when i click on the search button it will try to look for the nearest cabs right and according to that uh, it will also give me the charges also so here what is happening is that we are booking some we are making some sort of networking on the basis of the distance on the basis of the petrol required it is giving the uh, charges as well so here if you will see what is happening is that a graph based data structure will work into picture mainly breadth first search so there are two types of uh, graph traversals that we have bfs and dfs so here we want to find out the shortest distance right uh, so th that's where the bfs came into picture so these things whatever i am writing here i am not expecting that you all know because th these things we will already we will uh, obviously discuss in our upcoming sessions but here i want to just try to give you the real life applications real life applications where i want to suggest you that how basically these things are useful so that you will try to appreciate and you will now when you will go in future anywhere you will try to observe that okay here data structure is implemented here algorithms is uh, going on so the what is an algorithm the logic on top of these data structures is something which we are saying as a algorithm now okay apart from that i hope everyone is having the spotify to listen the music right now suppose in a spotify i am moving towards next so what is happening is that i will be able to get the next music i will be able to get the next music and when i am moving towards the previous i am able to get the previous listened music right so here if you will see in a way i am dealing with two pointers one is next and one is previous and that is something which is an application of spotify and that is something is implemented implemented on the top of a linked list linked list right now it can be a doubly linked list where we are having the two pointers next and the previous it can be a circular linked list where the last particular music is connected with the next uh, first one so that's where the circle ca circular linked list is coming into picture depending upon what kind of app you are using this kind of data structures are useful now this is where the pointers come into picture apart from that if suppose you are going towards uh, any e-commerce website okay you are going for any e-commerce website there you find out that there is a products under products again we are having any sub category which is a sub product okay and under that i am able to get the final product which i want to order right now here if you will see this is something which is a root node this is something which is a leaf node the final product which i want to get this is something which is a internal node now what is this all about this is something which is an application of i hope everyone is able to understand this point as well tree based data structure tree based data structure right moreover now i hope with the help of all these real life examples you guys will be able to get an understanding that it completely depends on the use case it completely depends on the scenario which you are trying to solve 
for example you have a records of students suppose you have a records of students and you want to store those records so students marks are there inside that record so here i am having suppose maybe five students and i am storing the marks of those students suppose out of 100 one student got 55 one got 95 one got 80 one got 85 and another one got 70 now this particular students marks the question is if suppose someone is saying that these student marks in this particular data my a uh, very frequent operation is suppose insertion and deletion means in the record i used to do insertion and deletion more frequently very frequently in that particular case you will observe that the linked list is much preferable data structure because in linked list it will take just constant amount of time to insert or delete any node whereas the same question if i am saying that the searching is very much frequent the searching is very much frequent so that's where you will say that okay if the searching is frequent array is more preferable because in an array there is a concept of random access there is a concept of binary search with the help of which we will be able to optimize our searching algorithm but in linked list it's not like that so basically if you will see the same problem also can be solved using different data structures depending upon what use case we try to solve so with the help of all this explanation what i want to tell you is that that it simply depends on what kind of problem you are trying to solve and with the help of which you should be aware about what kind of data structure you will be using here so that's where the different kinds of data data structure plays a very important role and that's why there is a need to learn every data structure in a very much depth apart from that as i told you the algorithm is something the problem logic that we are trying to solve on top of these data structures algorithm is something which is a sequence of steps that uh, that to finite steps i would say to solve any particular problem and obviously when you are trying to solve any particular problem that particular problem will you you will solve but before that you will try to save the save the data in some data structure that's where this concept is coming into picture so now in algorithm also we are having different different kinds of algorithms for example divide and conquer greedy uh, dynamic programming all these things i'll cover up in my next upcoming session but i hope that the question which is that why this dsa is required or why we are learning this concepts of data structure and algorithm i hope it's pretty much clear to everyone i must say that data structure is something which you will find in every real life scenario because it's the foundation of everything okay so just try to observe now after going back to your home that where you are observing that this data this kind of data structure in your real life applications is useful apart from the examples that i gave you with this i hope that the concept is pretty much clear to everyone and now you all are also excited with me to start a new course of dsa where now i'll start about i'll talk about that what is an algorithm in my next session happy learning to all bye bye everyone see you soon in the in the next upcoming session